Hello everyone and welcome to Long's Toys. Uh, today I'm just going to be talking a little bit about the new Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon. The first episode is available now on Nickelodeon's website. So if you jump over there, nick.com, you can check out the first episode for free. And then there are four other episodes. It says two, three part A, three part B, and four. So I don't know if three A and B are full length episodes and it's just a two parter or something like that. I didn't get that far. Um, to put in the other, or I'm sorry, to get to the other four episodes, you have to input your cable provider information. And I have Comcast, and I don't know why, but every single time you have to do one of these on a website where it says choose your provider, Comcast or Xfinity is never listed. And I'm like, aren't they one of the largest cable companies in the nation? But they're never listed. So that's beside the point. Based on what I saw in the first episode, I didn't, once I, I ran into that roadblock, I was like, it's not worth the effort to figure this out and then try to remember what my login information is for Comcast but regardless so I watched the first episode it's kind of what I expected from the pictures and the things that I've seen so far I still can't decide if I like the animation style or not sometimes I think it looks really pretty sometimes I think it looks really goofy so I really can't decide the story is interesting they're going for kind of a new mystical type of thing the the mutation aspect the mutagen and things like that is present but has completely new origins now um i won't go too much into the episode itself if you want to watch it you know you can head over there and check it out i don't want to do any spoilers or anything like that but basically just a real quick overview the episode starts with this um kind of small cat-like dog-like alien creature being chased and then the turtles kind of cross paths with it and try to rescue it from the people that are trying to get it and then that leads to a confrontation and kind of sets up I guess the villain for the series um again I just I don't know again the designs I don't love um a lot of people were concerned about them not having their original weapons they are present in the beginning but then they get destroyed and then they have to get the new weapons that we've seen like uh, glowing mystical weapons that have special powers and things like that so again it, the, the goofy over-the-top jokes are just a little bit too much for me um everything i did laugh once or twice i don't want to say it was completely devoid of humor it's trying very hard to be funny it's just it from what i equate it to the kind of way that animation is going this kind of new wave of cartoons teen titans go what this thundercat roar appears to be coming down the pike it's that very goofy over the top some slapstick some just way too in your face jokes like I said, I laughed once or twice, but overall it was just a little too much. Very hokey, very like fall into something, uh, you know, run around, get smacked or like run and trip or something like that. Kind of just goofy slapstick humor. And I understand if kids are responding to that, then by all means, if it works for them, they're the target audience. But for me, I just kind of meh, seemed a little too much. Um, the four turtles, you know, they have unique designs. Uh, Donnie has this kind of crazy backpack that can kind of transform, which seems crazy to me, and I don't know how he lugs that around on his back all the time, unless it's built into his shell somehow. Um, Mikey, he's kind of portrayed a little bit less like surferish, surferish but um, kind of like an artist. He has some kind of spray paint uh, stuff on his shell, which kind of neat. At least they're doing something a little different with that. Raph's still kind of a giant hulking bruiser type character. Uh, Leo's kind of a little bit goofier. I don't think he's the leader this time out, so he a, has a little bit more room to play. Uh, Leo is voiced by Ben Schwartz. I love Ben Schwartz, Jean Ralphio from Parks and Rec most notably, but he pops up in all kinds of stuff now. He has been a voice on the new DuckTales, which I haven't seen much of, but I liked what I've seen, and he's been great on that. So... Um, he was a highlight for me. He's one of my favorites, and he was kind of a shining star in this for me. Donnie is voiced by Josh Brenner, who I know as Big Head from Silicon Valley, and he had a couple good, like, throwaway lines. What I mostly laughed at was, like, right before, like, a scene was ending or maybe one time before they went to commercial, they had one or two just kind of quick throwaway lines that I thought were kind of clever, and I laughed at. But a lot of times it's kind of that in-your-face, uh, slapsticky type humor um, which is just not my favorite. And it's just kind of weird to see the turtles in this situation because it's 
in my mind, kind of a direct contrast to what they're about. Like at one point, Raph says something like ninja mode and they kind of like creep back into the shadows and it's a really neat scene. But then they immediately cut to like Raph's hiding behind a pole and you can obviously see him. And Mikey's like hanging from a rafter and again, you can obviously see him and he says something like, oh, I think they can still see us. So like just kind of taking what the turtles are known for and dumbing it down, it seemed very dumbed down. That was kind of the whole theme of the episode that I watched. It seemed like they weren't giving the audience enough credit or they're just going for cheap, easy jokes. Um, the new April, a lot of people were talking about the fact that she's African-American now. I understand, like, I applaud them for wanting to switch it up, you know, have some African-American characters in the series, and I'm no problem with that. But just the characters seemed very goofy. April is usually a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more clever, because she doesn't have, like, the physical prowess that the other turtles have. She doesn't have the ninja training as much. Sometimes later on she gets it, but... This version of April seemed very, again, goofy over the top, like most of the characters. Very, like, run in and just hit things, smash things, not really thinking at all. She kept just kept screaming, like, we gotta save the dog, we gotta save the dog. And I was just kind of like, I don't know, it just didn't... Again, it didn't feel like classic April, but I understand they're not necessarily trying to feel like classic April. It just felt weird. Again, a lot of these characters were just very kind of in-your-face, over-the-top brash not really certainly not the characters we're used to but again i can understand if they're going in a new direction it just seemed a little weird to me and really the biggest insult in my opinion was what they did to master splinter he's in about two seconds of the episode um the once proud ninja master has been reduced to a short squat fat couch potato um kind of racist in my opinion like a bad uh asian stereotype i a little weirded out by that um they, they he's watching tv and they come in and they need to steal like an artifact that he has or some trinket he has on a shelf because they think it's going to get them into this portal again not to give away too many spoilers but they ask him if they can have tv and he's like no no my butt's asleep i have to sit in my chair and this is my show i'm watching and then he just like falls asleep and they steal it anyway. And it was really weird. Like I said, I, his design is from the, everything I've seen, even from the original pictures, his design was what I liked the least about the show. And again, what they've reduced him to in this two seconds he appears, he's just, uh, you know, the butt of a joke, literally <laughs> talking about his butt. And he's just sleeping in a chair watching TV like, and the part that they're nin the fact that they're ninjas isn't really played up. Like, it, they never really allude to the fact that Splinter taught them martial arts. Again, it's one episode. They don't have time to set this all up. But, I don't know. It just kind of felt like he was there as their dad more than their sensei. So, that was weird. Um, a lot of times, to me, when they change things up, I ask myself, is it because they have a new, fresh take on the property? Or are they just changing it up to be different? or to fit a mold that already exists, like this new kind of pre-existing cartoon mold that is coming down the pike, like this is the direction everything's going in, it should be loud, it should be in your face, it should be goofy, way over the top. And I, I mean, again, maybe kids are responding to this. I understand that not everything is meant for me, an older, an older man who grew up with the originals, and I'm not saying it has to be. Please don't think I'm saying, this isn't exactly like the original, so I hate it. I'm always open for a new interpretation as long as it's well done. You know what I mean? Judging this purely on its own, it just, it felt very loud, very over the top. And when you have a property that already exists, it's naturally going to be compared to what came before. You can't stop that. It's just, that's what happens when you use an IP that already exists. And in this instance, it didn't really feel like Ninja Turtles to me. It felt like, a goofy show about anthropomorphic, you know, animal humans. It could have been anything else. You didn't have to call this Ninja Turtles. I feel like you could have called it anything else. The premise was not super um, germane to, like, the overall premise, what we know about the Ninja Turtles. Maybe they'll dive more into it in the coming episodes. Like I said, I'm purely basing this off just the one, the one episode, so... Maybe by the end of the season, they'll have more tie-ins to make it f feel more like Ninja Turtles. But I don't know. Like I said, I I don't want to hate it. I'm really trying not to be 
closed-minded. I'm trying to be open-minded. I'm really not, I don't want it to fail. I don't want to go in expecting to hate it. But from what I saw, not impressed so far. I'll definitely, like I said, I probably won't watch any more episodes online, but when it comes out on TV, I'm sure it will air at some point. I'll probably watch another two or three episodes just to give it a full chance and really say I tried. And as far as the toys, I might pick up one or two of the turtles just to see how they pan out. But again, from what I've seen so far, not super impressed, kind of bummed. The 2012 series was so good in every aspect. It referenced the original for older fans. It had brand new storylines to appeal to new fans. The toys were great. The designs were wonderful. The CG was beautiful. It had everything going for it. It was the perfect mishmash of new, old references. It brought all the fans together. Kids loved it. It was a great series. And maybe because this is coming right after that, it has large shoes to fill. And that's not helping it either. I can understand wanting to try something new because you don't want it to get stale. You want to bring something new to the table to engage people again. Because they could easily just do the same thing over again and you might go, well, I've seen this two or three times already. I'm bored of this. So I applaud them for trying a new angle. I just don't know if this is the angle to take. Again, I could be completely in the minority. Everyone else could love it. Kids could super respond to it and it could be another hit for Nickelodeon. And that's great. I hope it is because I don't want it to fail because if it fails, then Turtles might go away altogether. And I'm not looking for this to fail. I'm just saying it's personally maybe not for me. And some things just aren't going to be for me. And that's, that's going to happen. If kids love it, great. Then you're doing the right thing and kids are responding and you're going to sell toys. And that is, at the end of the day, their job. They need to appeal to fans who will buy these toys. And that is primarily young children. That's their target demographic. So I understand all that. I just think, for me... It kind of missed the mark. So we'll see. Time will tell what happens with this and what direction the show takes and how it continues from here. But uh, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to jump on and give my opinions just for fun. I don't usually do kind of reaction videos and things like that. But I just watched it and I just had all these thoughts. And I thought, eh, I'll record it for once. See how it goes. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you've watched the episode, tell me what you thought in the comments below. Like I said, Nick.com has the first episode available. You can just watch it uh, right on there without having to input any uh, cable provider information. But if you want to watch the episodes after that, you have to log in with your cable provider info and then they'll unlock the other episodes. So I'm interested to see what people think. Again, I'm really not trying to dump on it. I just, it certainly didn't feel like Ninja Turtles to me. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, but... Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching.